A. Piss take. Production. Welcome back to another episode. For a while I've been looking for a different solution other than using my mobile phone for maps and directions. And the main reason that if you're away from home, easy over a thousand kilometers or whatnot, in the event that your mobile phone breaks, um, it's gonna be a problem. So you could, you know, could lock you out from doing banking and communications. So this product has appeared on my radar and it's called AutoCast CarPlay Lite C5 SE Portable Motorcycle Wireless CarPlay Android Auto Screen. So yeah, long-winded um, description and I haven't seen any other videos on it. They have previous versions. So this is the new model that AutoCast have released and we're going to do an unboxing and fit it to the Suzuki V-Strom and see how it all works. And, you know, um, one thing that I actually look forward to having an Android system on the bike is being able to use the Waze app. So that gives you an indication where, you know, camera cars and police, police cars are on maps. And we're going to give it a test run and see how, how good it is and have a look and see all the functions and whether or not the screen's bright enough, especially during daytime running. So let's have a look at this product. So that's how it comes out. So yeah, 11 days, just shy of two weeks. Uh, it was a two week turnaround for delivery to the front door and it posts out from China. So I might just go out on the specs. What's it say on the back? CPU, it's an ARM Cortex-A7 DDR3, uh, it's 128 is that gigabyte or in 16 ddr3 so i'll just have to double check the memory size um, maybe it's up to 128 gigabyte for your ssd and 16 gigabyte memory okay screen projection carplay android auto car life display so it's a five inch ips high brightness display nits wise i don't know generally uh, you want to aim for a thousand nits for outdoor use for for like a bright screen that's what you need to see uh, video format h265 so it's using the new codec uh, h264 was the old video codec so that's pretty cool for the tech it's also got an internal tire pressure monitor device available for purchase okay so I'll picture format it reads jpegs picture resolution to Megapixels, 1920 by 1080. Uh, GPS track playback. It's got a G sensor, parking monitor, time lapse, wireless modes. So Wi Fi 2.4 gigahertz, uh, 5.8 gigahertz, and Bluetooth 5.0. Uh, video recording, language. What else is there? In external speaker. Input voltage, 12 to 24 volt, low pressure protection, A double C start. So the system it runs on, Windows 7, Windows 10, and Windows 11. Okay, so I'm going to probably have to set this connected to a computer as well, maybe to set up. Hopefully it's all in focus. So cardboard box, this is the device. Take the device out. It's got a screen protector on it. It's quite, you know, rugged looking. And it's got some mounting points. And that's the cable and that's the power. So that's the power lead. It's got a top sun hood. There that goes. So that's the top. And it goes like that. Here's the mount to go on the bike. Feels like a sturdy plastic. Okay, so how are we going to run this power? You can hardwire it into the bike, and I'm hoping that it runs off USB as well. Because who uses these power plugs? Waterproof power box. Oh, so it runs to the battery. So you're going to have to run the lead all the way to the to the battery. And 
that is not going to be long enough, is it, or is it not? So that length is going to really test me to try to fit this to the bike. So it's cutting it close, but we'll find out later for the V-Strong for that. And here's a few other little components, and that's for that bracket with a rubber or their plastic. And that would be step one is fit that first. And the question is, now, is it go, does it go that way? Vertical? So there's no instructions. So I'm going to wing it the whole way and yeah, tag along with me on this one. Cool. Comes with a little screwdriver, an Allen key. I'll just put these pieces aside for the to fix to the bike. These little rubber bit hard to tell. They don't give you any instructions. Okay, that'll be like a um, vibration dampener setup. And the question is, do I put some Loctite on that? Just to be safe, I might do that because later on down the track, it might get caught out. Excuse me if my hands are in the way. Thumb tight should do it. Okay, next thing, the lower side of the screen's two little, two little grub screws. Now I'm going to assume that that's for the SD, micro SD card. So we'll have a look. Just get your screwdriver. Whoa, now I've already just lost that screw, believe it or not. Oh, there it is. It's so fiddly. There's a little rubber door. Okay. So that opens like that. I'm just going to put in a 2 gigabyte micro SD for now. That's in, and it's got USB type C port there as well. So I'm not sure if that will power the device. We might do that now and test it. Let's power it up and have a look what it does. Okay, power button. Okay, welcome. Okay, let's see how interactive this thing is. Bluetooth. Where's my phone? Pair it. Okay, open the device, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the first connection of the... Ah, continue. Now I'm faster than what I need to read it. So straight away, it's connected to, what is it, Spotify? OK, 
Okay. Okay, cool. Let's go to Waze. Minus, minus, minus. It's pretty responsive. Okay, phone calls. Just see how this works. There's no audio coming through here. Oh, it's muted. So, it's got game snacks. Now I'm just going to pause the music because it's annoying. And what else is there? Okay, so yeah, it's pretty much the same as here, Carl. Okay, yeah, text messages come up, that's cool. I will call you later, got auction going. Okay, cool. Do you want to reply? What else is on here? So there's Google Maps. Okay, so that's working. Exit. Bluetooth. What's BT switch mean? So it's got the date. Okay, brightness, that's 50%. Let's leave it on 90. That's pretty bright. That looks really good. That's brighter than my phone. Settings. Screensaver, volume, language, time setting, time format, the 24 hour. Wi-Fi switch. So we'll have to set that up. Okay. Now let's get this on the bike. Turn that off. It's actually not a lens hood, it's just a hood. Okay. The sun hood, yeah, the sun hood's installed. Back. These screws off. Just an Allen key. I'm going to use the quad lock spacer. Now yeah, it's going to be probably a bit tight. Let's see if it's got any flex in it. We're working, we're getting there. Thank you, Quadlock. You've come to the rescue. That's the workaround. Okay. Okay, we're in position. That's what it looks like. Now I need access to the battery. Through here or here? Your finger. Oh, this is going to be 
interesting. So you've got Oh yeah, do that. Okay, hard up against the chassis frame. You can feed it through. Just that piece there has to go to the lower side of the, the chassis frame. Okay. And we can connect that. Just top that cable up in there. Put that bolt back in. to the battery now and run this under this frame here now it's up to you this little fuse box you can probably put a bit of double sided tape and then stick it to the underside of this plate and it'll sit neatly like that but we can address that later now we've got to connect to the battery Red to red and black to black. So I need to show you how the device powers up. Now that power cable, I've run it up. On the V-Strom there's a little tab that holds, that's, con that's with the uh, USB port. It can just hold that power cable in position and then you wind it up behind. Okay, now it's on. I don't have my phone on me. Here we go. So where's that playing from? Okay, that's playing from my phone. Well, I want audio. Does audio come out of this thing? Looks like there's speakers. Let's go to the settings. It's CarPlay. Okay, same thing. Why doesn't the sound? Play through the device. Yeah, we'll go for a ride and check it out. Now you're on. Will I pick up my phone? So now we're connected. If I lock my phone, put it in my pocket, now I'm going to go, I call it Waze, but <laughs> you guys are going to correct me, but it's Waze app. Now I'm using these Suzuki gloves, so 
here we go the test is does it work with gloves um, let's just click on bald hill and that's already started let's see, let's have a look how it goes for the kilometers per hour indication um, with the taco and yeah we'll go from there let's see how it works now I don't have a Bluetooth headset on the helmet so ideally that would be a preferred setup okay let's roll you guys I haven't made many videos on the V-Strom but she's a beast and I get a lot of comments on the GR Moto exhaust is it any good listen to this she's a beast okay so yeah today is an overcast day so yeah the um, the screens perfect to the moment you can see it's brighter than the Suzuki taco so that's another good sign so AutoCast, they had a sale on, and this unit was around $220. Um, they had 40% off or whatever, so I took advantage of the, of the discount that they had. The other thing is, go to the website, they also have usually another discount code on top, so another $10 off. So just keep your eye out for that. So the little units, yeah, just directly connected to my phone via Bluetooth I'm just gonna get some air in my helmet Ugh. okay What I like about this Waze app, it just indicates where, you know, camera traps and any police vehicles are on the maps. Yeah. The other great thing, it tells you if there's anyone broken down on the side of the road. So, um, upcoming hazards. And that's been my go-to um, maps. I used to use Google all the time, but um, ever since I, I found this, this app, I think it's fantastic. Highly recommend it. The next thing I want to do, I'll take some photos of this setup so you can see it on Instagram and stuff like that. Now it is, it's early days with this unit, um, but for the price, I don't think there's any other unit really to compare for price versus this unit. Um, with regards to being <laughs> fixed in this location um, you can someone can steal it all I have to do is undo the power the power leads are screwed on and joins together there's a little join and those two hex nuts just could or screws two hex screws could come out and you could take the unit out so they be mindful of that if you do purchase it um, one workaround is just put a dob of silicon on both both screws And just make it impossible for someone to steal it but nothing's impossible to steal at the end of the day if someone wants something they're going to take it anyway okay so the locations come up let's see so that's the vibration on it that's another thing It does shake a little bit. Now 
it's just turned off. Now, it, it might have turned off because I've set it at five minutes to auto shut off. And I'm gonna turn that back on when I pull over and readjust that power saving mode. I was hoping that the power saving mode, it would um, only shut off after um, not traveling or whatever. So I'll go into the settings in a minute and fix that. spot to pull over okay let's fix this unit up auto cast so, okay, let's go to we'll find the settings. Exit. Settings. Screen saver. Off. Now we're in business. See if it goes back in. I want to have a look there's game stacks messages okay we'll go back into there so there's a lot of shake okay let's go Okay, you saw the messages come up. For now, I'm just going to conclude uh, that the unit works. I like the, the screen brightness. Uh, the only thing is the vibration. So something I'll, I'll look at, you know, trying to minimize, but it doesn't really worry me. Um, that's the autocast unit on the V-Strom. So yeah, guys, good luck with um, your choice for GPS units and Android mounts and Android CarPlay and all that. Um, that's, I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. Just want to say um, also, oh shit. I just want to say thanks for um, support to the channel too. There's a few guys out there that have made donations or whatnot. And really helped out so yeah thanks for all the support in the comments